Hello friends, myself Dr. Deepak and today we are going to discuss about the urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder it is a muscular organ, it is a muscular reservoir of the urine. It is located into the pelvic cavity, it is actually in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity. So it is located into the anterior part of the pelvic cavity. The dectrosaur muscle of the urinary bladder it is arranged in the walls and the spirals means the muscle it is located like the conch okay as like we have seen the conch so in the conch there are the spirals like that okay so this dectrosaur muscle of the urinary bladder it is also arranged in this fashion like the walls and the spirals so that's why when this muscle is contracted so it is not cause the peristalsis but it is cause the mass contraction okay means the muscle is, is like that and when it is contracted so all the organ it is contracted in a once and that's why the whole urine which is present in the urinary bladder it is come out from the internal urethral sphincter okay so this is the special thing of this urinary bladder the muscle the dectrosaur muscle of urinary bladder it is arranged in a walls and the spirals okay so when it is contracted it is not cause the peristalsis okay but it is cause the mass contraction okay then the location of uh, the urinary bladder is size and shape it is varies uh, due to the presence of the urine inside the urinary bladder means when the urinary bladder it is full then uh, full with the urine so its location it is also changed its size and shape is also changed and when it is empty its size and shape and its location it is also changed okay when the urinary bladder it is empty so it is located into the pelvic cavity but when it is full okay then it comes upward and present into the abdominal cavity at the level of umbilical or even higher than the umbilical level so it is depends upon the presence of the amount of urine in the urinary bladder where the urinary bladder is located so when it is empty it is located into the pelvic cavity and when it is full so it is rich up to the umbilical or even higher the umbilical okay now the external features of the urinary bladder so when the urinary bladder it is empty so it is a tetrahedral in the shape the tetrahedral sp uh, shape is like that when the one molecule it is in the center then like that okay so this shape it is a tetrahedral shape if we connect all this dot so it is like a pyramidal shape okay like that okay so it is like a tetrahedral shape in the empty okay empty condition when the urinary bladder is empty it is a tetrahedral in the shape and at that time it has a apex okay and it has a base its apex it is directed forward okay and its base it is directed backward then it is a neck the neck it is directed on the inferior side okay and it is the most fixed part of the urinary bladder okay the neck finally it is uh, connected with the prostate and the prostatic uh, urethra and the urethral part okay so it is the most fixed part of the urinary bladder then in the empty condition there are four borders in the urinary bladder there is a anterior border here it is the anterior border then the posterior border and two lateral border okay it is a lateral border so this is one and this is the second so it is a four borders the anterior border the posterior border okay then the two lateral borders and the surfaces so it has a three surfaces when it is empty 
it has one superior surface okay one superior surface and two inferolateral surface if we assume the urinary bladder like that so it has a superior surface then two inferolateral surface it has a one apex here then one base is here then the anterior border is here the posterior border it is here and two lateral border is here okay so in the empty condition is the uh, external features are like that and when the urinary bladder it is full okay then is two inferolateral surfaces are form is anterior surface and the base and superior surface are forming the posterior surface so when it is actually full then its shape is like a ovoid in the shape it is like that ovoid shape okay so the apex is here the most fixed part the neck is here okay then it is the anterior surface and there is a posterior surface so when the bladder it is full then it is ovoid in the shape then its apex is directed upward towards the umbilical okay is neck it is directed downward okay it is a fixed part then is two inferolateral surfaces are forming is anterior surface and the base and superior surface are forming the posterior surface so at that time it has a two surfaces one apex and one neck okay then the relations relations of the urinary bladder so the urinary bladder the apex of the urinary bladder it is connected with the median umbilical ligament and this ligament it is finally attached with the umbilicus okay it is attached with the median umbilical ligament and it is a remnant of the embryonic urethras okay in the embryonic time in the urethras it is a urinary bladder okay so here is a urethras and in the urethras there is a allantoic tube and this allantoic tube it is attached with the umbilicus and the umbilicus is finally attached with the umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries okay so in the embryonic time the urine present in the urinary bladder it is drained by this allantoic tube uh, via the umbilical cord okay so this allantoic tube now after the birth there is no need of this allantoic tube okay and this urethras so this ureter uh, urethras it is obliterated and form the median umbilical ligament it is attached with the umbilicus okay so the apex it is attached with the median umbilical ligament and through this ligament it is attached with the umbilicus okay then its base so the base in the females the base it is connected with the lower part of the uterus means the cervix and the vagina okay just behind this urinary bladder there is a cervix and the vaginal area but in the males this area it is connected with these all structures okay showing in this diagram so in the males the upper part of the base it is covered with the peritoneum okay here this upper part it is separated from the rectum because just behind the this urinary bladder there is a rectum so in between the base and the rectum there is a fold of the peritoneum and this fold of the peritoneum it is known as a recto vesicular pouch what it is known as a recto vesicular pouch okay so this recto vesicular pouch the fold of the peritoneum it is separate this part the upper part of the base with the rectum then in its lower part the base it is uh, connected with uh, the ductus deferens okay the uh, terminate part of the ductus deferens and the seminal vesicles okay so in its lower part it is uh, connected with the ductus deferens and the seminal vesicle so this is about the relation of the base in male and female then the neck 
so the neck it is lies behind the pubic symphysis okay so if we draw here so it is a pubic symphysis so just behind this pubic symphysis here there is a area of the neck and the ureter and the urethra it is started here so it is lies 4 three to four centimeter behind the lower border of pubic symphysis the lower border of pubic symphysis okay so the neck it is lies three to four centimeter behind the lower border of pubic symphysis okay and it is also lies just superior to the pelvic outlet okay the plane of the pelvic outlet so it is a pelvis so the inferior opening of the pelvis it is known as a pelvic outlet it is a pelvic inlet so it is a plane of the pelvic outlet and the neck it is lies just superior to that okay so it is about the neck of the urinary bladder okay then the surface is superior surface so the superior surface in the male this superior surface it is related with the peritoneum the all superior surface it is covered by the peritoneum and it is connected with the terminal part of the sigmoid colon and the small intestine okay the ileum the ileum area it is present here on a superior surface okay so in the males is wall of the superior surface it is covered with the peritoneum but in the females most of the superior surface is covered with the peritoneum this is the superior surface okay so most of the superior surface it is covered with the peritoneum but not is posterior border okay the part here present in this posterior border it is not covered with the peritoneum okay and as we have discussed behind this urinary bladder there is a uterus cervix and the vaginal area okay so here the peritoneum is form a fold and cover the isthmus of the uterus cover the isthmus of the uterus this is the isthmus part of the uh, uterus and forming one pouch here okay and this pouch it is known as a vesico uterine pouch okay as we have seen that in the males in his post in the at the base area there is a forming of a one peritoneal pouch and it is known as a recto vesicular pouch because it is separate the vesicles from the rectum and as like that here on the superior surface in the females here on its posterior part of superior surface the peritoneum it is forming one different pouch and this pouch is separate the superior surface uh, to the uterus and its name it is a vesico uterine pouch okay so vesico uterine pouch it is present at here on the superior surface okay so now the inferolateral surfaces so inferolateral surfaces in the males this inferolateral surfaces are attached if we draw here the hip bone this is a pubic symphysis on both the side okay this is the pubic area like that so the urinary bladder it is present here here okay so in the males this inferolateral surfaces these are the inferolateral surfaces so this inferolateral surfaces are attached with uh, connected with the pubic bone okay then the retropubic fat 
okay retro pubic fat then pubo prostatic ligament here it is a there is a one ligament this ligament it is known as a pubo prostatic ligament which ligament the pubo prostatic ligament okay and two muscles are also present here and the name of these muscles are the levator any muscles okay and obturator internus muscle which muscle obturator internus okay so which structures are related with the inferolateral surfaces in the males they are the pubic bone then the retro pubic fat means the fat in between these two structures the bladder and the uh, pubic bone okay so the retro pubic fat then the pubo prostatic ligament and two muscles the levator any muscles and obturator internus muscle okay so these all structures are related with the inferolateral surface in the male in the female also these all structures are related but only one difference is that rather than the pubo prostatic ligament as the prostate is not present in the females okay it is a male organ so there is a pubo vesicular ligament means the ligament it is attached with the pubic bone and direct to the vesicles and not to the prostate so in the males there is a pubo prostatic ligament but in the females the uh, prostate is not present so it is directly attached with the vesicle so the uh, pubo vesicular ligament this is only one difference is present in the relation of the inferolateral surfaces or in the females okay you must have to remember that then when the uh, urinary bladder it is um, becomes completely full then it is approach to the umbilical in the abdominal cavity okay so at that time it is ovoid in the shape we have discussed that it is like that in the ovoid in the shape okay and here if the umbilicus is present it is a anterior abdominal wall okay here it is a pubic symphysis area so and in the full bladder only the anti the superior part of his anterior border this area only in this area there is a peritoneum the peritoneum because we have seen that the peritoneum it is present on its superior surface the superior surface it is forming mostly the uh, is posterior surface in when it is completely full okay so the anterior surface of the full urinary bladder it is directly in the contact with the abdominal wall and there isn't present of the peritoneum at this time okay the peritoneum it is only cover is little bit superior part in the full urinary bladder okay so if we want to approach the urinary bladder without penetrate the peritoneum so in this condition we can approach with here okay so when the bladder is full okay if there is a injury into the lower abdominal wall so it may directly rupture the urinary bladder okay so it is important for the clinical condition and if you want to operate in the urinary bladder so at that time also we have to full the urinary bladder so it reach into the abdominal cavity and from, uh, after that from the supra pubic area we can approach the anterior abdominal wall and we can reach up to the urinary bladder without penetrate the peritoneum okay so this is a important for the surgery you must have to understand that so this is all about the relations of the urinary bladder okay ligaments of the urinary bladder so bladder has some true and some false ligaments the true ligaments are the condensation of the pelvic fascia whereas the false ligament are the folds of the peritoneum 
okay so let me see we must have to remember the names of this ligament so the true ligaments true ligaments they are the condensation of the pelvic fascia so they are the median umbilical ligament okay we have seen that the median umbilical ligament it is attached with the apex and the umbilicus okay then the lateral true ligaments the lateral true ligaments are attached with the inferolateral surfaces from the inferolateral surfaces they are attached with the pubic bone okay so the lateral true ligaments then the posterior true ligament okay then the medial pubo prostatic ligament and the lateral pubo prostatic ligament okay so these are the true ligaments the median umbilical ligament then the lateral true ligament then the posterior true ligament then the medial pubo prostatic ligament and the lateral pubo prostatic ligament okay the medial pubo prostatic ligament it is attached with the anterior side with the pubic symphysis and then the inferolateral surfaces in the uh, lateral pubo prostatic ligament it is attached with the lateral surface of this pubic uh, bone and from this uh, there with the lateral inferolateral surface okay so the medial pubo prostatic and the lateral pubo prostatic ligaments these are the true ligaments then the false ligament they are the peritoneal folds so median umbilical fold then medial umbilical fold then the lateral false ligament and the posterior false ligament so these are the false ligament the median umbilical fold then the medial umbilical fold then the lateral false ligament and the posterior false ligaments okay so this is all about the ligaments of the urinary bladder now we see the interior of the urinary bladder okay so the interior of the urinary bladder can be seen through the cystoscopy okay in the living organism in the living uh, humans we can observe the interior of the urinary bladder by the cystoscope and this process it is known as a cystoscopy okay so the interior when we see the interior of the urinary bladder most of the mucosa of the empty urinary bladder it is folded inside okay it is a muscular organ so the most interior side there is a mucous membrane and then after there is a muscular coat okay the detrus or muscle it is present okay so most of the mucous membrane of the interior of the urinary bladder it is loosely attached with the, the uh, muscle 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 coat okay so that's why uh, so because when the urinary bladder is become distended so this mucous membrane is also distended if it is formally adhered with the muscular coat so it cannot be distended okay so that's why the mucous membrane is loosely attached with his muscle coat okay and in the cystoscopy we can see the empty bladder the most of the mucous membrane it is folded but at the base it is a base means the posterior surface of the urinary bladder so at the base we can see that at the inferior part of the base there is a one triangular area 
which is uh, which is very smooth even in the empty bladder it means that at this triangular area the mucous membrane it is formally adhered with his muscular coat okay so this triangular area it is known as a trigon what it is known as a trigon okay so at the uh, inferior part of the base of the urinary bladder there is a one triangular area which is a smooth in the nature because its mucous membrane is formally adhered with the muscle coat and this triangular area it is known as a trigon okay both the ureters are open here at the in at the superolateral angle of the trigon here they are the superolateral angles of the trigon so the ureters are open here so there is a ureteric openings okay the area the superior surface of this trigon which is a area in between these two ureters this is known as a interureteric ridge what it is known as a interureteric ridge and it is also known as a bar of the mercier what it is also known as a bar of the mercier why it is so called and interureteric ridge because it is present in between the two ureteric opening that's why it is known as a interureteric ridge okay it is actually formed by the longitudinal muscles present into the ureter okay we have seen that in the ureter in the most interior side there is a mus uh, mucous membrane then after mucous membrane there is a circular muscle and then after there is a longitudinal muscle coat and on the most outer side there is a tunica adventitia okay so the ureter it is forms like that so here there is a two types of the muscle in the ureter one it is a circular in the inner side and outer side there is a longitudinal muscle coat so this longitudinal muscle coat of the ureter is reach up to this bar of mercier and forming a ridge and this ridge it is known as a interureteric ridge okay so on the inferior part of this trigon on the inferior part of this trigon there is a elevated area okay this area it is elevated this area is elevated due to the presence of the prostate behind because here on his inferior part the prostate is present on behind so due to the presence of the prostate this area it is elevated in this elevated area it is known as a uvula vesicae what it is known as a uvula vesicae so uvula vesicae it is present at the inferior part of the trigon and finally it is opens at here as the internal urethral orifice okay the urethra the urethral internal orifice it is opens at here and then it is continue into the urethra the prostatic part of the urethra okay so this is all about the internal structures of the urinary bladders okay hope so you may understand okay so there is a trigon then the superior surface of this trigon okay it is known as a bar of mercier or the interureteric ridge because it is present in between these two ureteric openings in this ridge it is formed by the longitudinal muscle fibers which is present into the ureters okay then on the inferior part of the trigon there is a uvula vesicae the this is a elevated area because the presence of on the posterior side there is the presence of the prostate okay then Uh, inferior to that there is a internal urethral orifice is open here and it is continue as a prostatic urethra on the inferior side okay so this is all about the internal structure of the urinary bladder now we see about the capacity of the bladder so the mean capacity the mean capacity in the adult male okay it is 220 ml but it varies from 120 ml 
to 320 ml okay so the mean capacity of the bladder in the adult male it is 220 ml but it is varies from 120 ml to 320 ml okay then the desire of maturation or desire of urine and urination is started when the bladder is full at the 220 ml so when the bladder is full with the 220 ml of urine so there is a desire of maturation but the bladder is emptied at when there is a 250 ml to 300 ml of urine okay desire of urination it is started at the 220 ml but it is actually emptied generally when it is full with 220 ml to 300 ml of urine okay then it can be tolerate up to 500 ml of urine okay if the bladder is full with the 500 ml of urine so at that level also it can be tolerate okay but when it is full uh, beyond this capacity okay beyond the capacity of 500 ml means the 550 or 600 ml then is start paining okay so the painful condition is started pain is started beyond 500 ml okay and this referred pain it can be feel at the lower abdominal area than the perineal area and in the penis also okay so this is about the capacity of the bladder the main capacity it is about 220 ml it can be vary at the 120 ml to 320 ml okay then the desire of maturation it is started when the bladder is full with the 220 ml and it is actually emptied generally when it is full with the 250 ml to 300 ml of urine then it can be tolerate up to the 500 ml okay but beyond the 500 ml is started paining and the peripheral pain can be feel at the lower abdominal area then the perineum and the penile area okay so this is about the capacity of the bladder then the artery supply of the bladder so generally the two arteries the superior vesical artery and the inferior vesical artery are supplying the urinary bladder the superior and inferior vesical arteries are the branches of the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery okay there is a i have to clear all this so we can understand the artery supply and all that okay so abdominal aorta it is divided into the okay common iliac arteries then this common iliac artery has a the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery okay then this internal iliac artery has a two trunk it is a one posterior trunk and it has a one anterior trunk so it is a common iliac it is a external iliac and it is a internal iliac in the internal iliac there is a posterior trunk and it is a anterior trunk so from this anterior trunk there is a two arteries the superior vesicular artery and the inferior vesicular artery so the superior and inferior vesicular arteries are supplying the urinary bladders okay and as of these two arteries there are also the internal the obturator artery it is also supplying to uh, these uh, 
uh, urinary bladder and the inferior gluteal artery it is also supplying to the urinary bladders okay in the females there is isn't presence of these inferior vesicular artery but rather than this inferior vesicular artery there is a uterine artery and vaginal artery okay so uterine artery and vaginal artery so in the females there is a superior vesicular artery then the uterine artery and the vaginal artery are supplying to this urinary bladders but in the male there is a superior vesicular artery and inferior vesicular artery and rather than these two there is also it is also supplying by the inferior gluteal artery and the obturator artery okay so this is about the artery supply then the venous drainage okay so at the inferolateral surfaces of these urinary bladder if we draw the bladder like that okay so at its inferolateral surfaces there is a presence of the vesico vesicular venous plexus vesicular venous plexus okay this vesicular venous plexus it is present on the inferolateral surface is draining to the urinary bladder okay and it is finally draining to the internal iliac veins so this vesicular venous plexus it is draining the uh, urinary bladder then the lymphatics of the urinary bladder so the lymph the lymph nodes which is draining to this urinary bladder is finally reach up to the external iliac lymph nodes what external iliac lymph nodes and they are also draining by the internal iliac lymph nodes but mainly by the external iliac lymph nodes it is draining okay so this is about the lymphatic drainage of the urinary bladder then the now supply so the vesicular plexus it is innervate the urinary bladder okay the urinary bladder it is innervated by vesicular plexus okay so this vesicular plexus has a both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic fibers so its sympathetic fibers are comes from t11 to l2 segment of the sympathetic trunk okay t11 to l2 segments and parasympathetic it is about the sympathetic efferent okay and it is about the parasympathetic efferent fibers so the parasympathetic efferent are from the s2 s3 and s4 okay and the efferent fibers means the information is collected from the urinary bladder by the efferent fibers these efferent fibers are, are mostly the parasympathetic fibers okay most efferent fibers are parasympathetic okay but some sympathetic fibers are also efferent in the nature but most of the uh, efferent fiber of the urinary bladder means the information collected from the urinary bladder it is mostly by the parasympathetic fibers but some sympathetic fibers are also collecting this information and they are reaching up to the posterior column of the sympathetic trunk and from the posterior column they are reach up to the uh, 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 you know, nucleus which are present into the brain okay so uh, we will discuss all these in the uh, next lecture uh, but here you have to understand that the vesicular plexus so the vesicular plexus it is formed by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic fibers the sympathetic efferent from the t11 to l2 and parasympathetic efferent from the s2 s3 and s4 most of the efferent fibers are comes from the parasympathetic okay then 
द वन सोमेटिक नाव द प्यूडेंडल नाव ओके दिस प्यूडेंडल नाव इट इज इनर वेट टू द इंटरनल यूरेथ्रल ऑरिफिस ओके द इंटरनल यूरेथ्रल ऑरिफिस ओके द यूरेथ्रल ऑरिफिस इट इज अ वॉलेंट्री इन द नेचर एंड इट इज कंट्रोल्ड बाय दिस प्यूडेंडल नाव सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द नाव सप्लाई ऑफ द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर क्लिनिकल एनाटोमी ऑफ यूरिनरी ब्लैडर सो मोस्ट ऑफ द क्लिनिकल एनाटोमी वी हैव डिस्कस द इंटीरियर ऑफ द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर कैन बी एग्जामिन बाय द सिस्टोस्कोप ओके देन वेन द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर इट इज डिस्टेंडेड मीन्स इट इज फुल सो इट इज रीच अप टू द एबडोमिनल एरिया एंड इफ ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम इफ देर इज ए पेनिट्रेटिंग इंजरी एट द लोअर एबडोमिनल वर्ल्ड सो द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर कैन बी रपच्चर्ड ओके In the suprapubic cystoscopy, the urinary bladder is distended by the 300 uh, ml of urine. So the urinary bladder it is comes into the abdominal cavity, and at that time between the urinary bladder and anterior abdominal wall there is no peritoneum. So we can approach the urinary bladder without penetrating the peritoneum. Okay. then urinary bladder it is a one of the site for the formation of the stone because the concentrated of uh, constant concentrated urine it is lies within this urinary bladder so it is a one of the common site for the formation of the stones okay then finally if there is a enlargement of the prostate okay because in the old age the in the males the prostate uh, prostate is gets enlarged so in this condition there is a chronic obstruction of the urine and due to that the interior of the urinary bladder it is get hypertrophied and this hypertrophy of uh, urinary bladder it is known as a trabeculated bladder what it is known as a trabeculated bladder okay so it is done due to the abnormality of the prostate actually when the prostate is get enlarged the prostate urethra it is uh, closed so there is a chronic obstruction so there is a constant pressure into the urinary bladder so that there is a hypertrophy of the urinary bladder and it is known as a trabeculated bladder hope so you may understand thank you thank you very much